A grid or a macro grid is basically the coppers and wires that are moving your energy from sources like power plants and then bring it into Brooklyn. Most of us get our energy from the grid. A microgrid has a way to isolate itself or section off a certain section of the main grid where it would operate independently in a case of an emergency or a brownout or a blackout of sorts. So after Sandy came through, uh the grid went down, things went dark, there's a recognition from the governor's office down, we gotta do something different, we need to do something about this. We can't have the grid shut down like this and have people stranded, you know, have in infrastructure out of, uh, out of commission for weeks at a time. So the governor's office put together a proposal and said, we want to develop a number of community microgrids. These are places where you have resilient infrastructure in place, where you've got your own generation, you've got battery storage, you have the ability to actually power things should the utility grid go down. What's exciting about the Brooklyn microgrid is that rather than importing energy into the neighborhood, what we can do is that we can generate energy locally and actually provide the energy where the energy is needed. That's a big step because it's creating this incentive for people in our neighborhood to maybe consider investing into solar panels and selling their excess energy to their neighbors. Is this too small? My name is Janice and I'm the coordinator for the Soup Kitchen Chips. Uh, we're located at 204th Avenue in Park Slope, Brooklyn. It's a wonderful, wonderful soup kitchen. We're very lucky here we get to provide a single meal and our guests come back for seconds. Our program upstairs was created to house homeless women. Each mom is given her own apartment. Hi, good morning, Chips. My name is Sharon Lewis. I am the director for Francis Residence. It's a program for a pregnant mother in her last trimester or with an infant up to three weeks old. This is uh, one of our, our vacant room. As you can see, um, it's pretty much furnished with all the necessary uh, furnishing that mom and her baby need. Just imagine coming home from the hospital with your newborn baby and you're just able to just rock your baby. How great is that? Chips feeds 250 people a day. We house nine homeless families. We have about 120 to 150 volunteers a week that actually come and make the place run. Our building, though there is no mortgage, we still have a huge utility bill and that's electric. All of the apartments are individual electric units, so all of the moms have to pay their own electric bill. In this winter, it gets cold. They're using portable heaters as well. And in the summer, it's hot, so there's air conditioners running up here. Down in the soup kitchen, I don't think we could ever get it cool enough uh, without some kind of help. And now we have been offered a very interesting project to team up with Microgrid and have solar uh, panels put on our roof and be the hub for the Microgrid community. The plan with CHIPS is basically to make them a little more energy resilient. CHIPS has a great rooftop and they have a clear line of sight to the sun. They're a organization which counts their pennies. So any which way and we can save any dollars going out from CHIPS and keeping it in-house to pay staff or to buy folks meals um, is a great idea. The CHIPS building is a very tall building in a manufacturing district which has much lower buildings is very prominent on 4th Avenue. The basic concept was to do something with the solar panels to make them very visible, uh, something of a billboard or an advertisement for clean energy, solar energy, and the microgrid. Brooklyn Microgrid found us because we've worked on a number of solar projects in the Park Slope area, and there's a block on President Street where there are currently five independent solar uh, systems on residential buildings. And several of them are participants in the microgrid, and one of our clients recently sold some of their excess solar power to their neighbor across the street. Those systems, when you're on the street, you, you don't even see the systems. You have no idea that they're there. They're pitched so that they get sun hitting them, but they have a very low pitch. And for the chips building, we took them and tipped them dramatically so that they'd be much more prominent and visible as you drive up 4th Avenue. 
Uh, so one of the things we're going to have to do is we're currently talking to engineers to help us come up with a structure that will help tie them down. Their real issue structurally is that they want to just blow and, and pull off the roof. This is probably different than a lot of our other projects in that it is, um, it is more for the community, it's more prominent, um, so there is sort of a, a larger scale aspect to it. The PV plant that's going on the roof of that's probably going to be somewhere between 30 and 50 kilowatts. If we put that thing on there right now, uh, it would probably just produce a little bit more than the building consumes. But with chips, we'll do an efficiency audit and find out what we can replace to reduce the consumption of the building. That means you have more energy that goes back onto the grid to serve other buildings around it. I'm really hoping that these solar panels that are put up will generate enough energy that we would be able to sell it and then I could count on that as a revenue stream. A lot of people know about us already. Hopefully that will be a way to encourage them to buy the energy from here because it's not just buying it from a big company, but to actually see that their energy is coming locally and it's giving back.